Test one, two. One, two. Test one, two. One, two. I had this idea of a thing called a walker. A person who lives in a certain town or hamlet, who every day walks a circuit of the town, the same path every day, watching the town every day, memorizing each part. And what the walker does, whether he knows it or not, is he keeps the town real. Is that good? City seems bleak to me sometimes, dispirited. What city did I hear you say? Today the sky was gray and smelled of burnt coffee. Or I was having a stroke. Or you were. And I took a bus. To meet with a shrink. I explained to her why I needed chemistry to keep myself on the level and productive member of society. Off level. If you're too level, you're not too productive. Foolishly, I worried that I would be too weird. I wasn't normal enough to qualify for drugs necessary. To help normal. someone be normal. Why would you want to be normal? And buses are odd places, aren't they? They're bleak. They're not clean. Depressing. They smell funny. It depends on the time. It depends on the place. Muddy in the spring. In other cities I've lived in, there have been crazy street talkers. There have been people who stand at a corner and rant at traffic. People who mutter to themselves about aliens and Santa Claus. I don't see them as much here. I think it's because they ride the bus. Today, on the way to the shrink, there was a lady behind me who was telling this extravagant, hyperbolic story about mice in her apartment. It was such a small thing. I've done this before. As she talked loudly, to, I suppose probably someone sitting near her, but to the bus's hole as well. This problem with a mouse in her apartment became this overarching tale of greed and corruption and how she, the little man, with a single phone call can shut down the shut it all down. Organization that the government the abuses the little person and, and, and allows such mass, things as mice to exist in apartments anywhere. And it's such a small thing, and the idea that she was exaggerating to impress the best she could do was that she could call the city and have her apartment condemned because her landlord didn't deal with the mouse problem. But very clearly, it was the biggest thing she could think of. I've known people who have this tendency to tell tall tales that are based on nothing particularly interesting, not giants walking among us, but... get down to it, it's a very small tale. Maybe... Tiny, small, petty things expanded into world wars and wonders. Such wars and like us. my walkers, I wonder if maybe cities don't also have talkers. Of course they do. And their job is not to keep the city in place, but to take it apart. That's what talking does. A conversation can keep on. So heading out today, there was a Santa Claus at the bus stop. Not a Santa Claus. He had sunglasses, was unshaven under his... Behind, behind his beard. Was missing teeth. Glasses in front of it. An oil change place, waving at the bus. He seemed nice enough, said something I believe was intended to be helpful to me, though I couldn't make it out. Why was he there? Bus stops can be... Interesting microcosms. Why are any of us there? On the way back, the mental health professionals. I noticed a clutch of people standing at the nearest bus stop, in front of what's 
I'm not making it up. The Mixed Emotions Club. I couldn't bring myself to stand with them, so I went to the next bus stop down, which was a condemned Mexican restaurant. Somehow I think this is a metaphor for the bleakness of life. That said, it's not all bleak. Obviously it's not. Sometimes it's a keep go on. From the bus. There was a man sitting behind me who snapped his gum. That man. Just snapped his gum. And I couldn't tune it out. And it bothered me. And earlier in the waiting room, there was a guy who was sucking on his teeth. He couldn't tune it out. It bothered me. Ever since I was a kid, background noises, I couldn't tune them out. Unless I tuned them out altogether. And I would sit in the cafeteria sometimes. And listen to the background noise, the rumble, the traffic, the people. And I would imagine it was not an assemblage of noises and sounds unrelated to each other. It was one great sound, one great voice. And some days I would be able to imagine this very well. Individual voices would fall back. And this one great sound would wash over. Sometimes there would be a voice. Make out the words. Sometimes it's an angry voice. And with those brief moments of fear that I knew I was listening. seem passive, but I think humans being humans, we can tinker with reality. Lord authority has author in it. Responsibility has response. Are we done here? Careful. If it knows you're listening.